good morning and uh, maybe good afternoon in Japan. Uh, konnichiwa in Japan. Uh, good morning in Myanmar. And uh, this is the second Kyushu Myanmar Medical Education Seminar. Uh, participated in the 67 Myanmar Medical Association Conference organized by the Chushu University Hospital and uh, University of Medicine Wan Diago. I would like to say thanks to the uh, Professor uh, Shizu Shimasu and Professor Trungu and uh, sharing the uh, chairing section in this uh, section two because we, we already have a section one. Uh, it was very successful uh, uh, section. We have a discussion and presentation, interesting presentation in section one. Maybe it will be the same in the section two. Uh, I would like to, maybe you attend that, that meeting. I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the Professor Shizhi Shumasu uh, for your very uh, futuristic and advanced idea and uh, you know, uh, 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 way forward thinking since 2002, because you have formed or uh, organized a telemedicine center in Asia and uh, Pacific region. And also now with the uh, you know, COVID uh, crisis, uh, this is very much you know, uh, 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 advanced program. I mean, uh, uh, Head of time program for us, and that's why I would like to congratulate and acknowledge you, and then also uh, thanks to you uh, because you uh, are helping Myanmar to be in line with the future, you know, medical education and training program. And uh, I also like to say thanks to the Professor Uto, who uh, you have been uh, 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 leading us to have a cooperative uh, co uh, uh, program with Japan and also uh, still leading the uh, surgical development in Myanmar. And, but uh, I think uh, COVID also, we have uh, some good and bad things. Uh, I mean, uh, a good thing is now we are connected and then also we can connect anytime. I mean, uh, uh, you, we can see each other and also we can learn each other and also we can have training program uh, very effective, efficiently through the uh, internet. And that's uh, now we are connected to the all over Myanmar and also all over the world. And then all, all the doctors who has interest in the uh, our section, they can join us, you know. That's why I think this is a very much uh, 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 advanced and also promoting program for uh, medical education. Uh, uh, that's why I would like to say thanks to the Professor Shimasu, and also I would like to request you please continue to help us to develop the, all these programs. And uh, uh, we know that since 2014 and now 2021, almost seven years, and I'm sure it will take for life now, for life. Thank you so much. With that remarks, I would like to hand it to you the chair person for the section. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think Professor Shimizu is going to be speaker from... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So thank you I very much the, for the... Closing remarks. Okay. So thank you very much for the uh, uh, great uh, opening remarks. And I'm also quite happy to be with you to uh, chair this uh, surgical session uh, in the uh, 67th uh, Myanmar Medical Conference. So actually, uh, it is our great uh, pleasure and honor to have uh, started the collaboration, as uh, Professor Zola is so said, that uh, a few years ago. And uh, it was a kind of good timing that uh, we are now accustomed to the new technology to be able to organize this kind of formal uh, surgical conference today. So at uh, any rate, uh, due to the uh, time uh, restriction, uh, we'd like to start the session and I'd like to introduce the first speaker, who is the, uh, Dr. Nakata, Kohei Nakata. 
and uh, he is the hepatobiliary uh, surgeon. And actually, he is a new chief of uh, hepatobiliary group in our uh, university hospital. So, and he's a lecturer, uh, kind of between associate professor and assistant <laughs> professor. And uh, anyway, we'd like to uh, hear his uh, presentation titled Tips and Pitfall for Pancreatic Duodenectomy. So, uh, Dr. Nakata, could you start uh, your presentation? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Simiz, and thank you very much for Professor Ali Miyamad. And uh, this is my great honor to present, make a presentation here. Then, uh, unfortunately, I can't go to your country. Then I want to discuss with you uh, directly. But due to the crisis of COVID-19, then I cannot uh, directly discuss with you. In the future, I'm going to go to your country and talk with you uh, directly. Then today, uh, I would like to make a presentation about the tips and the pitfall for pancreatinectomy. Then this is the data from the WHO. Then uh, you can see the left side, the pancreatic cancer in Japan, and the right side is the Myanmar in uh, the pancreatic cancer in Myanmar. Then as you can see the number itself is uh, high in Japan, but uh, uh, it's due to the population, but uh, there is small number, but the mortality rate is high in both countries. Then I think the most of the patients cannot survive, but survive uh, of the pancreatic cancer. Then the question is how to improve the prognosis of the pancreatic cancer. Then, yeah, this is the analysis of the prognostic factor for pancreatic cancer. Then I think the most important one is uh, to complete the adjuvant treatment post-operatively or preoperatively for PEDA. Then other one is the R0 rejection in, during the surgery. Then and the safe operation and no complication is very important to complete and to do the adjuvant treatment for pancreatic cancer, I think. Then this is a guideline in Japan, uh, and this is the algorithm for treatment of the pancreatic cancer. Then, as you can see, the algorithm has drastically, drastically changed last year. Then you can see the... Mm, mm, hold on. The, in the only the st stage zero pancreatic cancer directly uh, go to the surgical therapy, but most of the can pancreatic cancer, including the stage one in our country, the preoperative chemotherapy has uh, recommended. Then after the chemotherapy, we uh, assess again. Then we go to the surgical therapy. Then after the operation, we do the adjuvant therapy again. Then this is a regular treatment in Japan now. Then the other one is, uh, this is the data of the post-operative mortality in each hospital. Then we divide these hospital due to, uh, depend on the hospital volume. As you can see, the mortality rate is significantly higher in uh, less mortality, uh, less uh, hospital volume. Then like the, if the hospital performs five cases per uh, PD a year, the mortality rate is 4.4%. But if the hospital performs the PD more than 50 cases a year, the mortality rate is less than 1%. Then I think, then the pancreatic duodenectomy is a complete, uh, complex uh, procedure. Then the procedure should be performed in high uh, and experienced hospitals. 
then the question, this is the answer of the question, the how to improve the prognosis of the pancreatic cancer is a less invasive and safe operation in high volume hospital and the post-operative chemotherapy. This is uh, the, my opinion. Then next one is how to improve the prognosis of pancreatic cancer by operation. Then, as I mentioned before, R0 rejection is very important here. And uh, uh, safe operation for early postoperative chemotherapy. Then for safe operation, then I think the preoperative evaluation of the anatomy around the pancreas is very important because the artery and the venous system is very complex around the pancreas. Then we evaluate the, uh, each patient's uh, anatomy by 3D system like this one. Then uh, evaluate uh, where is the variation and where is the uh, occlusion or something. Then the hepatic artery is very important because sometimes the replaced right hepatic artery is uh, running uh, behind the pancreas. Then we should check before the operation. Then IPDA is also important. As you know, the IPDA is the IPDA branch from SMA. Then IPDA supply the blood flood of the pancreas head. Then we usually cut the IPDA before we cut the vein, uh, veins to pre uh, prevent the congestion of the pancreas head. Then if we isolated the SMA around the SMA and cut the IPDA. Then the, if cutting IPDA early phase of the operation reduce the blood loss, then we always cut IPDA in the early phase. Then we also do the mesenteric approach for R0 rejection. If the tumor is located the head or antenate process of the pancreas, the tumor usually invade to the uh, uh, posterior side of the SMV and very close to the SMA. Then if uh, we usually isolate SMA, clearly isolate, then uh, see if we can detect, uh, we can remove the pancreas, uh, the pancreatic tumor from SMA. Then we usually isolate around uh, ISMA around the distal side of the SMA. Then this is a picture of the mesenteric uh, approach. Then this is the SMA and this is the middle colic arteries. We flipped the mesocolon to upward, then uh, isolate SMV and SMA as the early phase of the operation. Then this is the middle colic arteries. We can cut middle colic artery, but we usually preserve it uh, to prevent the uh, ischemia of the colon, uh, colon. Then this is IPDA. You can see the IPDA branch from the right side of the SMA, then be, uh, run across the, behind the SMA. If uh, there would be uh, two or three, um, two or three IPDAs, then we cut all IPDAs, uh, which supply the blood supply to uh, the pancreas head. Then next, I want to show you the video clips of the pancreatic head cancer case. Then this is a case of the last Monday. Then my junior performed most of the uh, operation, but I did the core uh, thing. The, as you know, the, as you can see, the pancreas head tumor is uh, located at the head of the pancreas, then very close to the left renal vein, and the tumor invaded to the first jejunal vein and the portal vein. Then we should isolate the SMV uh, distal side of tumors, and we uh, should uh, combine dissection of the portal vein and first jejunal veins. We usually do the middle incision. 
as it is. Then direct the momentum, the expose the tumor first, then check see if the, uh, there's no dissemination or not. Then uh, we usually mobilize the right column completely when we do the portal beam dissection to prevent the tension of the anastomosis. Then here you can see the tumor seems to be embedded to the mesocolon here. Then this is a lift linear vein and this is the IVC. The, the tumor seems to be attached to the lift linear vein, but first we clearly uh, show the normal, re, uh, normal region then see if we can uh, detect between the vein and the tumor. Then we make it clear the uh, anatomy completely, then detect IBC, IBC of the distal side. Then, yeah, this is the uh, thick uh, tissues, uh, fibrous tissues. Then we should dissect these, these tissues one by one, then uh, expose the uh, anterior layer of the IVC. Then you can see IVC clearly. Then here is a tumor very close to the left renal vein. But I understand the anatomy clearly. Then we dissect between the IBC and the tumor from here. Then if we detracted the tissues correctly, we can see the yeah, connective tissues. Then we can detect here, bluntly or sometimes sharply. Then finally, we don't need to combine dissection of IBC or left renal vein. Now we are dissecting between the left renal vein and the tissues attached to the cancer. Yeah, there seems to be the information, but we can detect if there is no direct invasion to the left renal vein then it sometimes takes time, but uh, it doesn't matter for safe operation. Then you can see left renal veins here. Then we can completely remove the tumors from left renal veins. Actually, there's no direct invasion to left renal vein. Then, Next, we move to the mesenteric approach. First, we cut the mesocolon and try to expose the SMA. Then uh, you can see the SMB and we isolate the, uh, first we try to find the middle colic vein and this is uh, actually the right colic arteries. Sometimes the patient has the right colic artery, then this is the middle colic, uh, this is a fast jejunal arteries. Then we dissect the left side of the fast jejunal arteries. Then, uh, here you can see the first jejunal vein. Then we should uh, remove the mesentery of the incest intestine. Then you can see the first jejunal vein here, and this is a first jejunal artery. Then this is a SMA, and we try to detect the posterior side of the SMA and the left side of the SMA. Then now I try to detect around the anterior side of the SMA. Then we identify the middle colic artery. Then this patient has two middle colic arteries, the right branch and the left branch. Then you can see the SMA. Then we usually detect the outside of the basque uh, nerve layer. 
we don't detect the nav around the SMA. Then you can see SMA clearly here. Here you can see IPDA, then we isolate the IPDA, IPDA, which supplies the blood flow to pancreas head. Then we, you don't need to cut, we just need to occlude, but uh, this time we cut the IPDA here. Then this is a second branch of the IPDA, which runs just the posterior side of SMA. Then we just uh, occlude the IPDA to, to stop the blood flow to pancreas head. Then we dissect posterior side of the SMA. Then you can see first digital vein here. Yeah, then the cancer is very close. Then the point is uh, we dissect the normal region. Cancer is around here. Then we isolate the SMA and this is the SMV in the region, which doesn't affect it by cancers. Then we clearly isolate the SMA here and uh, SMB. Then we flip down the mesocolon and we can see from the anterior side, the SMA and the middle colic vein artery and right colic artery. Unfortunately, this patient, uh, the tumor embedded to the right colic artery, then we sacrifice right colic artery here. Then we combine, we did the combined dissection of the mesocolon here but we already isolated the SMV and SMA. Then it doesn't take time in this position. Then you can see SMV. Then we dissected the right side of the SMV. The tumor would be embedded around here. Then we can dissect around here. Then next we cut the pancreatic pancre uh, pancre parenchyma by the harmonic scalpel or electric scissors. Then this one is a IPDA which was occluded before. Then we occlude again and cut the IPD here. Then I think there is no congestion of the pancreatic head. Then we don't see any blood loss here. Then finally, we isolate the liver side and the distal side of the SMV. And we cannot detect between pancreas head and the SMV here. Then we decided to do the combined dissection of the SMV. Then to prevent the twist of the vessels, then we mark by the blue pen. Then uh, occlude the SMV and cut the veins sharply. Then the mobilization of the complete uh, right, colic, uh, right colon is very important. Otherwise, uh, sometimes the tension will happen and it's difficult to do the anastomosis here the second assistant should push up the colon uh, towards the liver side. We usually use the five, we usually use the five O proline and do the continuous suture. Then the notch uh, dot is uh, around one millimeter. Then we do the anastomosis of the posterior side. They continue the running suture. We don't change the sutures, we just continue in the laundry. 
Then before our final anastomosis, we inject the saline with heparin to prevent the anastomosis the other side, other wall. Then we, we fulfill by the saline. Then complete the anastomosis. This is the findings after removal of the tumor. Then for safe pancreatectomy, then I think the evaluation of the anatomy and safe operation is very important. This is the result of the Kyushu University. Uh, we performed the more than 600 cases in 10 years. Then we have one case of mortality but uh, the mortality rate itself is 0 0.16, then we consider we can perform the PD safely. Thank you very much. Okay, then how shall we do it? In the previous session, I saw that the question and answers are done after the three presentations, so would it be okay? Okay, okay. That will be okay, sir. Okay, okay. And also due to the time, time limitation, time. Uh, that would be better. So let me introduce the second speaker, uh, who is Dr. Uh, Moriyama, Taiki Moriyama. And he's, uh, he, uh, uh, he was graduated from the Medical College Kyushu University in 2000s and became a PhD, uh, got the PhD 10 years later. And then he's now the associate professor of the Department of Endoscopy and uh, also the deputy chief of the upper, upper gastrointestinal or surgical team. And he is also the deputy director of the Overseas Exchange Center where he invited actually the, some uh, Myanmar uh, surgeons uh, to have some training here in Kyushu University with us. So his uh, presentation title today is uh, Advanced Gastric Cancer, what's the standard management? So uh, can you start, uh, Dr. Moriyama, please? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shimizu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Zhou Wai So and Professor Tun Wu. Uh, I have a very, uh, I'm very honored to, uh, to have great opportunity. So um, my topic is uh, advanced gastric cancer. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce uh, Japanese gastric cancer treatment guideline, fifth edition. Uh, this, uh, this guideline is published uh, in tw uh, 2018 in Japanese, uh, but uh, recently, uh, last year, uh, the English version was uh, published. So this guideline uh, is freely downloaded. Uh, you can get freely uh, this guideline. So uh, mainly uh, I uh, talk about these guidelines. Uh, this is the uh, algorithm of the gastric cancer treatment. Uh, first, uh, endoscopy and CT scan and ultrasound and so on, and some kinds of uh, examinations. As if uh, the non curable um, factor, uh, factors uh, suspected, we sometimes do the staging laparoscopy. And advanced gastric cancer is a clinical T2, T3, uh, T4, uh, and the lymph node metastasis. Uh, gastrectomy is mainly uh, main uh, treatment. And after uh, chemotherapy, uh, we sometimes uh, gastrectomy. Uh, Neoadjuvant chemotherapy is now is ongoing. Uh, 
as a green card trial, but uh, sometimes uh, very effective uh, of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So this this is a lymph node dissection uh, of total gastrectomy and distal gastrectomy. And this version is excluded uh, number 10 lymph node, uh, higher spring area. So th this area is D2, is standard lymph node dissection area, and this distal gastrectomy is this one. And the surgical strategy of advanced gastric cancer, uh, curative surgery is standard gastrectomy is the resection of at least two thirds of the stomach with D2 lymph node dissection. And extended surgery sometimes uh, uh, performed uh, such as gastrectomy with combined resection of adjacent involved organs or gastrectomy with extended lymphadenectomy exceeding D2 in special cases. On the other hand, uh, non-curative surgery is here. Palliative surgery may be done in to improve patient's serious symptoms such as bleeding or obstruction. A palliative gastrectomy or gastrogenostomy is selected depending on the resectability of the primary tumor or surgical risks. Uh, stomach partitioning gastrogenostomy has been reported to result in superior function compared to simple gastrogenostomy. However, just uh, tumor volume reduction surgery is not recommended. So next slide, uh, I'll introduce uh, our operations. Uh, this is a laparoscopic gastrectomy uh, position of the uh, trocar. And this patient is a uh, advanced gastric cancer stage three and so tumor is located on uh, esophagogastric junction. This is the exposed tumor. And so D2 plus uh, lower uh, mediastinal lymph nodes, uh, lymph node dissection is added. And this is a spring, uh, so-called number four SB lymph nodes. And here is a number six, uh, right gastroepiploic vein. And num uh, right gastroepiploic artery. Also carefully divided. And then uh, transduction of the duodenum. We recently used uh, the reinforced uh, stapler. <clears throat> and this is a, a suprapancreatic area. Uh, this artery is left gastric artery. And along the common hepatic artery and the proper hepatic artery, lymph node dissection, the, you can see the portal vein, D2 lymphanectomy. And this, this is a spring artery. And then uh, interoperative endoscopy uh, was performed and tumor uh, resection of the uh, esophagus. This is a view after lymphanectomy. And Reconstruction is rule Y. And the next case is uh, the advanced gastric cancer, uh, ravage cytology positive and a small number of uh, peritoneal dissemination. So first uh, we performed a staging laparoscopy and after that, uh, chemotherapy was performed. 
and then uh, we do the laparoscopic distal gastrectomy. And some uh, adhesion. Uh, when, uh, at the staging laparoscopy, we uh, resect uh, some uh, nodules of uh, disseminations. So th this uh, this time, uh, no, no more disseminations. Uh, and I divided uh, number six uh, lymph node. Uh, Right gastropiploic artery and vein was divided. And then transaction of the duodenum. And suprapancreatic areas, uh, right gastric artery. And then left gastric artery. Uh, And left gastric vein, coronary vein was divided. And then divided the stomach. <clears throat> and the reconstruction was B root one. <laughs> so-called delta anastomosis technique. <clears throat> this is a view after lymphonectomy. The third one is uh, also advanced gastric cancer. Uh, this patient has a uh, chronic renal failure, so uh, the patient uh, cannot uh, take uh, chemotherapy, so okay. uh, very far advanced cases, so, but uh, we, we have the laparoscopic total gastrectomy with uh, pancreatectomy and spleenectomy because uh, uh, spleen higher uh, lymph node metastasis as evidence. So uh, we have to do a uh, splenectomy. This is a metastatic lymph node, very sore. And suprapancreatic areas carefully Dissected splenic artery then circulating and in circulation of the splenic vein. and the ligation. Mm. Of course, after clamping uh, spring artery, uh, vein ligation was performed. Mm. And the <coughs> pancreatic tail uh, was also uh, dissected. reinforced uh, stapler. <clears throat> this is after view, this is a view after 
total gastrectomy with uh, splenectomy. <clears throat> so uh, now splenectomy for advanced gastric cancer is uh, uh, Japanese after the result the result after clinical trial in Japan, uh, splenectomy is not necessary. Uh, splenectomy and spleen preservation and uh, high mobility uh, rate of splenectomy. And uh, the prognosis is not improved uh, of uh, splenectomy. So in total gastrectomy for uh, proximal gastric cancer that does not invade the great the greater curvature splenectomy should be avoided uh, as it increases operative mobility without improving survival but uh, that case uh, in that case uh, the higher spleen areas lymph node metastasis is evident uh, uh, we have to do splenectomy. So uh, this is a chemotherapy for unresectable advanced gastric cancer or recurrent gastric cancer. Uh, we examine, uh, usual, usually examine the HER2, the HER2 negative and HER2 positive is divided and uh, uh, mainly S1 plus cisplatin. Uh, if had to positive, uh, plus uh, trastuzumab. Uh, it's the main uh, chemotherapy regimen. And or uh, conditionally recommend similar agents uh, we can use, uh, like such a, such a uh, agent. And post-operative chemotherapy for stage two or stage three, uh, we use S1 or capestabine plus oxaliplatin. Uh, and now uh, for stage three, uh, S1 plus docetaxel, uh, we usually use for advanced gastric cancer post-operatively. And uh, pre-operative uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy is now is ongoing uh, clinical trial, but uh, we mainly use uh, S1 plus cisplatin. So now it's uh, just a uh, ongoing. So finally uh, we introduce uh, laparoscopic gastrogenostomy, B row 2. Mm. A tumor is located the uh, antrum of the stomach. So uh, partitioning of the stomach and uh, B row 2 reconstruction was very simply uh, gastrogenostomy was performed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Moriyama. So due to the time limitation, let me go to the third and final presentation. And let me introduce the Dr. Nagai, Eishi Nagai. He actually uh, was the associate professor and the chief of the upper GI in Kyushu University and uh, worked with us uh, for long, but he now moved to uh, Fukuoka Red Cross Hospital, being a vice director and the director of the Department of Digestive Surgery, as well as the director of the Minimally Invasive Surgery uh, Center. And uh, he also worked uh, uh, on robotic uh, surgery when he was uh, in Kyushu University. And he has experienced more than 1,000 cases of laparoscopic gastrectomy and more than 350 cases of the SOF, uh, uh, minimally invasive esophagectomy so far. Uh, I believe that uh, many of the uh, participants today uh, should know him because he worked uh, uh, with many Asian 
uh, people and invited a few times uh, to the Myanmar Surgical uh, Conference as well. So, and he now uh, started uh, the uh, working on a metabolic surgery uh, to treat uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and that is his today's presentation. So the presentation title is the Metabolic Surgery to Treat the Diabetes, Current Status and the Challenges. So Dr. Nagai, please start. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Shimizu. Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to give a chance to have this presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear uh, you very okay. well. And I express my gratitude to all the related persons. Uh, anyway, I'd like to, I wanted to go to the uh, Myanmar to make a presentation, but uh, uh, because of a crisis of COVID-19, I cannot uh, be there. So today I'd like to uh, make a presentation by webinar. Webinar is very convenient for busy doctors such as Professor Shimizu and uh, Dr. Chung Wu, Professor Chung Wu. And uh, uh, I'd like to start my presentation. My today's topic is metabolic surgery. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, this, uh, this is the trend in adult body mass uh, index in the world. Upper column is 1985, lower is 2014. Uh, global mean BMI increased from 1975 to 2014. If uh, these trends continue by 2025, global obesity prevalence will reach 18% in men and the surplus 21% in women. So I please, next please. Uh, this slide shows the prevalence of obesity at global level according to uh, Social Demographic Index, SDI. The prevalence of uh, obesity was generally higher among women than among men in all age brackets. The prevalence uh, of obesity is rapidly increasing regardless of gender. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows the prevalence of adult overweight and obesity in each country. The prevalence of adult obesity in Japan is 3.6%. Uh, Next slide, please. This is the ranking of prevalence of obesity in 200, uh, 200 countries. In uh, Japan is 157th in this ranking and Myanmar is 167th. Prevalence of obesity in Japanese adults as well as Myanmar is quite low compared to other Western countries. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a world map of obesity. North, Middle and South America, Middle East and North Africa and European countries are very high. On the other hand, the prevalence of obesity of the Western Pacific region, including Myanmar and Japan, is not so high. Next slide, please. This is the prevalence of diabetes in adults published by International Diabetes Federation, IDF. The prevalence of diabetes is very high all over the world, especially in Western Pacific, Middle East and North Africa, and Southeast Asia. The prevalence of obesity of Western Pacific region is not so high. However, okay. diabetes is very high. Next slide, please. In 2000, global estimate uh, of adult living with diabetes was 151 million. By 2009, it had grown by 88% to 285 million. Today, IDF calculates that 9.3% of adults are struggling 100. 
three million people are living with diabetes. Projection for future have clearly indicated that diabetes is likely to continue increasing considerably. Next slide, please. Next. This slide shows the mortality of obese patient. Kaplan-Meier estimated the mortality rate was 2.4% at one year, 6.4% at five years and 13.8 at 10 years for surgical patient. For much control, estimated mortality rate were 1.7% at one year, 10.4% at five years, and 23.9% at 10 years. Next slide. So this slide is prognosis of type 2 DM of 13,883 individuals with T2-DM. At the start of the study, 13,819 died during follow-up compared to 2,700 to 290.6% non-DM control. Prognosis of type 2-DM is poor to treat these conditions, metabolic surgery is necessary. Next slide. This is the algorithm for the treatment of type 2 DM as recommended by DSS2 voting delegates. The indication above are intended for patient who are appropriate candidate for elective surgery. The criteria of BMI for Asian patient are different from other patients. Next slide, please. There are some type of procedure of bariatric metabolic surgery, blue eye bypass, uh, banding, sleep gastrectomy, and the three gastrectomy with duodenal jejunal bypass. Next slide, please. This slide shows the trend of surgical procedure in the world. Three gastrectomy is increasing in number rapidly. It's a green line. Next slide, please. Uh, this uh, survey confirms that the sleeve gastrectomy is the most performed metabolic surgical procedure in the world. It might be depending on its simple surgical technique compared to Lui gastric bypass and it, the, its versatility together with the promising long-term weight loss outcome and the remission rate of type 2 D. Next slide, please. The slide shows the long-term result of randomized control trial that compared medical therapy with surgical therapy in patients with type 2 diabetes. 150 patients with type 2 DM were categorized into three groups, uh, medical therapy, sleep gastrectomy, and gastric bypass. After five years, each of two surgical procedures were superior to intensive medical therapy alone with respect to achievable exploratory target for glycated hemoglobin of 6% or less without use of diabetes medication. Uh, see the uh, figure A. And uh, after after five years, reduction in body weight and the BMI were greater after gastric bypass and sleep gastrectomy than after intensive medical therapy indicated in figure C. Next slide, please. Professor Wei Ji Li proposed ABC grading system that can predict the uh, success of type 2 DM treatment using metabolic surgery among patients 
with an with inadequately controlled type 2 DM. Patient with greater ABCD score, greater ABCD score had a greater rate of success of, with type 2 DM remission. Next slide, please. According to this report by Wei Ji Li, gastric bypass can provide more durable diabetes control than sleep gastrectomy. Sleep gastrectomy can only be considered in diabetic patients with high DABCD score. As sleep gastrectomy is now mainstream of metabolic surgery, however, uh, gastric bypass might be necessary for patients with lower ABCD score. Next slide, please. In Japan, sleeve gastrectomy is also mainstream. Next slide, please. National Health Insurance, NHI, covers laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. There are some criteria of NHI for this procedure. When BMI is 35 or more, one or more showing obesity related uh, comorbidity are necessary. Showing type 2 DM, hypertension, dyslipidemia, or uh, obstructive SAS. When BMI is 35, uh, when BMI is between 32.5 and 34.9, in adequately controlled type 2 DM and, and uh, one or more showing, showing in hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, or severe obstructive surface uh, uh, are necessary. Next slide, please. Prof. Nagai, please conclude because of the time constraint. Oh, co conclusion? Yeah, yes, please, because. Okay, okay. Uh, so, next slide, please. Oh, this is a trend of the uh, laparoscopic bariatric procedure in Japan. Uh, mainstream is uh, sleep gastrectomy. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next, please. Uh, next, please. We started the uh, metabolic surgery. So I, I think it's a very important to build a team for long-term outcome of a metabolic uh, patient, uh, obese patient with type 2 DM. Next slide, please. Next. Next slide, please. Skip this. Uh, it's our uh, uh, initial uh, result of initial experience. Next slide. The uh, conclusion, the main procedure of metabolic surgery, laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy in Japan as well as work. Uh, sleep gastrectomy is a promising long-term weight loss outcome and the remission rate of type 2 DM for patients with mild to moderate type 2 DM. In Japan, broad NHI cover, coverage of uh, various types of procedure, including laparoscopic gastrectomy, Gastric, uh, the bypass is important for better treatment of uh, type 2 DM. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Next slide. Next slide. Last slide, please. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Professor Nagai. Well, I'm sorry that I have to conclude because <laughs> of the time, time constraints. Because, uh, yeah. well, I would like to thank the organizing committee of the 67 Yama Medical Association, uh, 
Professor Zawisu from University of Medicine One, Professor Shimizu from Jushu University, and all the three distinguished speakers, uh, well, who have given, enlightened our knowledge regarding the pancreatic urinectomy uh, and CS cancer of the stomach and metabolic surgery, and the sponsoring Novartis Company, and all the audience for uh, this scientific symposium. Uh, to uh, a reality. Thank you very much to you. Uh, 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 thank you so much. Actually, because of the time constraint, we cannot have a QA. Actually, uh, because I think the uh, American Association, they set the time. That's why it's very difficult to get more in the, on, on the web, you know? That's why I think, uh, 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 but I don't know how long we can have. Uh, if you, you would like to have a Q&A section until we stop the you know, connection. I don't know. I don't know whether they will stop it right away or, or because they if you keep on <laughs> standing warning, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because only three questions, and uh, all of all of three questions only one is a comment from Professor Usuao and one from Professor Tindima about this uh, tips and tricks in mesenteric approach in SME first approach, but that will be a long answer, I think. Right. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, shall we ask, uh, uh, what about the uh, Professor Shimizu? Would you like to have any comment? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for everybody. And uh, uh, you know, the, due to the time constraint, we need to stop probably. But uh, I hope that the presenter, uh, uh, you know, may be kind enough to uh, send the answers uh, to the uh, people who you know raised them. So uh, could you? Uh, take a look at the questions and send some comments to them through the chat or through the email. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, that, that's good. You can answer through the uh, chat box or through the uh, I mean, email. That, 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 that you can answer. That's good. Uh, but I would like to have, a, a, I mean, this is a chance because I can talk to you all and then also uh, Professor Shimizu. And uh, please, if you, if we have to continue the, uh, you know, uh, uh, telemedicine and also communication. I just wonder, I just wonder, uh, shall we have regular communication? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, every two months or something like that, uh, shall we organize a meeting? I mean, uh, a one hour meeting with the surgeons and the endoscopy. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, also we can have a uh, continuing medical education program and then program, and then also coordination cooperation among the two institutions. It, it will be very good because now we have very easy to communicate through the Zoom or through the web, you know? And I think uh, that kind of thing we would like to have, I mean, regular keep in touch or regular educating program or regular video conferencing, you know, uh, clinical meeting or something like that. Yeah, no, this is, a, 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 I would like to suggest, and then if possible, uh, we will we, uh, share the uh, uh, pre-reading and then we can discuss on that, you know, uh, half an hour section. Okay, you know, it's more than, uh, you know, happy for us, you know, why not, you know, do it? You know, so it's an ideal situation that you propose that. So, the, you know, uh, we'd like to start the discussion how we do it. But uh, maybe two conditions. One is you are great support. Of course, you know, you propose it. So, you know, we can have your support. And the second is we need some people who are in charge of organization about the program. What kind of presenter, you know, what kind of topics and uh, when and what time. So could you propose us uh, some people who can talk with us to make it uh, realized uh, so that we can, you know, start the communication uh, for the program? Yeah, 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 then I will organize. I will organize and I will discuss with Professor Chou and then Professor uh, 
me and then uh, and then also our group and then we will have a coordination group for that program and then we will send email to you and then we can have that kinds of you know uh, a program okay that's really what we wanted to do too so let's start it and let's start the discussion good thank okay. you okay thank, thank you very much. much thank you thank you okay Thank you so much. That's good. Okay. And thank thanks you. for the, all the speaker. Uh, but probably we might have some more questions. But maybe we will send email to you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.